Hello there, thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys. Today I wanted to do something really fun. As some of you might know, I'm really into 3D printers. So what I wanted to do today is check out the absolute cheapest 3D printer that I can find anywhere. And no, I know what you're thinking, this is not it. This is the Ender 3 Pro. It cost about $240 and I think we can go a lot cheaper than that. Instead, this is what I'm talking about. This is the Lavist's Mini 3D Printer. And yes, it comes in this box. Can you believe that? Look at it compared to the Ender. Uh, this has got some assembly and we're gonna go ahead and do that, get it built and check it out. And we wanna see how it compares to the $240 Ender 3 Pro, which while not the most expensive printer, it's not the cheapest either. So if you're ready, I'm ready. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is get this box open, so let's do that. We got a little book, the user manual for the X1. Got a sample filament, a USB cable. We have all the tools we need. And I believe this is a little filament holder. Uh, we probably won't be using this. And that's it for the box. This is the entire 3D printer, all of this. I, I am so excited about this, I just wanna say. I like finding things that are really cheap and just kind of seeing what they can do. And this thing looks great. Okay, it looks like this just snaps in. Okay, now I lost a lot of the audio for this, so I'm just going to talk over whatever I was saying before. Here's the controller box. This is what controls the movement of the arms here. It's how you change and move the printer on its axis. And there's where you plug the power brick in. There's your USB port. There's your SD card port. That's a micro SD card it takes. There's no LCD panel on here. Uh, this is the filament holder that I installed off of camera. It was actually very easy to install. Just two screws down there that were already installed. You just pop it on and tighten them. It only holds 250 grams of filament, so we'll probably be 3D printing and using something else in the future. Probably not going to use that filament holder at all. This thing is really adorable. I have actually never seen anything like it. As you can see up there, that's where the filament goes through. And this is the tiny little magnetic bed. And I love that there are screws there so you can put it back on correctly. That's really nice. And uh, I have never seen a 3D printer this small before. It's adorable. All that was was snapping in place the arm and those two bolts I just pointed at. You just tighten those up and this whole thing is built. There's really nothing else to it. It's so simple and easy. I have never seen a 3D printer this inexpensive, and I've never seen one this small before. I am honestly in love with this thing. It's amazing. You can see it. Later on, I'm going to put it up to the Ender 3 Pro so you can see a size comparison, and you're going to flip. It's that small. But we're going to test this thing's worth by doing a couple of prints after I adjust the bed because that's the only metric that really matters is can this thing make good prints and it's a $99 printer so I think that's worth knowing so let's check it out all right to level the bed it's really simple uh, you just get a sheet of paper under there and you set the extruder to home and then you adjust the thumb screws underneath the bed until the paper just barely scratches against the extruder and you have to do it a couple of times. It's a really easy process. The little thumb screws and the little bed, I'm sorry, but they're adorable. We're just about done doing that, and it feels pretty good to me. I'm just checking to make sure because you want a good print, and that's it. So here it goes. It's really easy to start printing. You put an SD card in here, and It'll take the first print it sees when you hit the play button and it'll print it. 
So here it goes. It's printing a little rocket that came on the SD card when I bought the printer. I thought it would be nice to print that on both this and the Ender 3 just to show you what it can do compared to the more expensive printer. And this thing's got a heated bed and away it went as soon as I hit the play button. It just heated up the bed and started printing and it started to do a really good job. So let's watch this print for a second and we'll check it out when it's done. Okay, it's starting to finish up, and overall, it's done an excellent job for something so little, so lightweight, and so inexpensive. It's done better than I could have possibly imagined, and uh, as soon as it finishes up here, I will take this thing off of the print bed, and pretty soon we're going to get over to the Ender 3 and let you check it out. And by the way, my parrot Link says hello. There it is. I took the little brim off of it, and there it is. It looks great. It printed really well. There are a couple of little glitches here and there. There's one layer that didn't do quite that well at the bottom, but that's to be expected. I didn't spend very much time calibrating this, and overall, I'm pretty excited about it. So here's that same print on the Ender 3 Pro. And uh, I just basically took the SD card out of the smaller printer and I put it into this one. And we're just gonna let it do its thing and see what happens. All right, we're starting to wrap up on the Ender, and it looks pretty good from where I'm sitting right now. We'll have a look at it and uh, compare it to the other one to see what we think. I think overall it's going to be pretty close, at least from what I can see by looking at the other one and looking at this one from where I'm sitting in my chair. All right, it's finished, so let's look at it. The one I just showed you here for a refresher was from the smaller printer, and this one here is from the Ender. The Labist's print is a little bit more rounded, I think. This one's got a little bit more of a polygonal thing going on. Uh, it's got some weird layers, but not like the other one. And uh, overall, it printed really well, too. Both of them did. They both have their kind of weird little quirks that all 3D printers have. And each one's going to be a little bit different, but they both turned out pretty well. And for a size comparison, just for fun, I wanted to sit the Labist's printer on top of the Ender 3 so you could get a look at this. Look how small it is. It is so tiny. So what are my final thoughts on this 3D printer versus the Ender 3 Pro? Well, the Labist's 3D printer for $99 is a heck of a deal. Uh, actually, it's $149, but Amazon's currently offering $50 off of it. That makes it the cheapest 3D printer on Amazon right now. And of course, I'll put a link below if it interests you. It's a great little printer. Now, it's not a serious printer by any means. You know, it's, it's for a hobbyist, and it's pretty good. I mean, I showed you the print that came off of it, and it's really, really, really good. Um, if you need bigger than a 3.9 inch print area, you're going to want to go with the Ender 3 Pro, which of course is a, you know, a class all its own. Of course, you saw it came off of it, and they're both good prints for different reasons, and they both have their quirks. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend this 100%, uh, especially for the price. I was really surprised when I pulled it out of the box, and I saw how tiny it was, and I saw... It didn't hold very much filament. It just seemed like it wasn't going to be any good. But 
It's a cute little printer and it works really well. And uh, best of all, it only weighs about two pounds. Uh, it's really light. It takes up almost zero space. That's what I have to say about it. Thank you for watching Retro Tech Toys um, on Twitter. If you want to check me out there and uh, if you'd like to consider supporting us on Patreon, we have a link for that too. And thank you so much for liking and subscribing. Thank you again for watching Retro Tech Toys. We'll see you next time.